What follows is going to be a description of how to use Google Earth to determine latitudes and longitudes and distances and bearings. This is the Google Earth browser version. Notice that you can zoom in and out with the roller on your mouse or with the plus and minus symbol in the lower right. Again, this is the browser version and I'm taking us to Hilo, Hawaii. If I move to the left toolbar, I can find a toggle bar for grid lines and I want to put the grid lines on so I can see exactly latitude and longitude. If I want to locate a particular spot with latitude and longitude, I can actually use the longitude lines that are showing up and the latitudes that are showing up with the grid lines and come up with an estimate of latitude and longitude. I am going to have to estimate what percentage of the distance between the two lines that X is sitting. So in this case, it looks like it's three quarters of the distance from the right to the left, and that's about one minute. So three quarters of a minute is 45 seconds. So that's how I got the longitude. And the latitude, it looks like it's in the halfway point. So I estimated that. And because I estimated, I had to add some error. And that error represents how close I think my estimation was. I could, if this was a bigger screen, also use a ruler to help me and do some conversion, but just eyeballing it in this case was, was enough. The other thing that I can do is simply use the bottom right latitude and longitude marks to point and just see what the latitude is there and what the longitude is there. Uh, however, I'm going to want to move the cursor around a little bit when I do that to either represent the width of the city that I'm trying to estimate or to just see what kind of air I have even for a single point. Uh, I can notice that there might be a big jump. In this case, it's a jump of about two seconds in latitude and about four seconds in longitude. So I go to the middle point and then I add that error in to my final answer. Now distance, there's a ruler and you can change the unit on the ruler and then you're going to click in two different locations and you start with a starting point and you can move it and you'll notice that the distance is showing up as I'm moving it. So this gives you a sense of how sensitive it is and what your air is. In this case, I felt that I could only get reasonably within 0.1 kilometers of the distance I wanted to measure. Now let's look at the desktop version of Google Earth. And this one has a little bit more functionality. So once again, let's head out to Hilo, Hawaii. And uh, first thing we're gonna do is put on the grid lines. To do that, you go to the view menu, and then you just click on the box that says grid. And you will see again, the latitude and longitude line showing up. So you can zoom in and use the point and click or the grid lines to determine latitude and longitude. In the case of the uh, desktop version, there's a lot more precision in the latitude and longitude. Notice the decimal points down there. You still have the same difficulty in knowing exactly which spot you clicked and exactly where between the grid lines you might be. So again, you're going to want to round your answers to match what you think is a reasonable answer for the, the item that you are measuring. Uh, whether it's a city width or whether it's a, uh, an, a even a, a single building is going to have some variation from one side to the next. The distances work the same as they do with the browser. You're going to click on one spot and then move this, move your cursor to the next and you'll see the length changing up there as you do so. So, so far very similar to with the browser version. Again, add the error that represents how well you think you captured the exact length where you put your starting point and where you put your ending point. The other thing though that you can do with uh, the desktop version is get the heading, otherwise known as a bearing or an orientation. So the angle from north that you would have to rotate from north to, to line up with that particular line. Oceanographers measure uh, the angle as a angle from 0 to 360 measured always clockwise and geologists they look instead uh, at how far from north or south as long as we don't go more than 90 degrees. When you get these headings, bearings, or orientations off of this tool, be sure that you incorporate some air and remember that it's always going to give you the answer in the oceanographer's method so you geology students are going to have to convert. Next thing to look at is a path tool. If you click on the path in the ruler, there's a little box you can check called Show Elevation Profile. 
Now when I create a path, it's going to tell me the length of that path, but it's going to immediately show me a profile of what that would look like in cross-section. So you can see the high points, the low points. It's a really beautiful tool, especially if you want to create a hiking route or just see how the topography is changing across an area. How do you actually enter latitudes and longitudes into Google Earth to ensure that you get to the place you want to go? You simply enter your latitude first, always, for Google Earth, longitude second, spaces between the degrees, minutes, and seconds, then a comma, spaces between the degrees, minutes, and seconds of the longitude. The default is always going to be north longitude, so you don't put in an N or an S. A positive number is north, a minus number is south. For longitude, the second one, a positive number is always going to be east, and if you want to put in west, you're going to have to use a minus number, so here you go. And once you click search, it'll take you to that location, and you can confirm by the number that's in the bottom right of the window that, in fact, you are at north latitude in this case, and west longitude.